and thanks for joining us. This is a tutorial created for students studying in the Ocean and Naval Architectural Engineering Discipline at Memorial University of Newfoundland's Faculty of Engineering and Applied Science, St. John's, Newfoundland, Canada. This video demonstrates lines plan creation in Rhino 3D. Specifically, the example follows a step-by-step -step instruction to create a complete, professional-looking lines plan, starting from a basic hull form using Rhino 3D. It includes producing the lines required in a lines plan, adding measurements and indications of important points, and designing a grid and the title block as required. As a prerequisite for this video, you must have a CAD model that can be used and manipulated in Rhino 3D of the ship hull that you want to use for your lines plan. If you don't have this, see our past instructional videos to learn how to create your own, as listed on the screen. Alright, so let's get started. As you can see, I'm starting with a simple 3D hull which I created for this example. It's good practice to use a different layer for each set of lines that you have to create for your lines plan. Here I start with the section lines and create a new layer with the name body plan. My first step is to create a surface with a height greater than the ship's total height and with a width greater than the ship's beam. This surface must be placed immediately at the aft end of the ship, then the surface is used to generate an array extending to the forward end of the ship. The number of surfaces to be used in this array is up to you, though it should be sufficient to capture the design of the ship. Next, I use the intersect function to create lines which intersect with the surfaces that I just created and with the hull. As you can see here, the section lines are the result. Here. I move my new lines out of the way and delete the array of surfaces. The next step is to use the same technique to create water lines in what is called the ship's plan view. I first create a new layer called plan. Then create a surface surrounding the ship running from its length and beam as shown. Next, I create an array of the surface up to the maximum height of the hull. Some lines plans will only require water lines up to the design water line, though for the purpose of this example, I will use the entirety of the hull. Again, I use the intersect function to get the intersecting lines between the array of surfaces and the hull. I then move my new lines out of the way and delete the array of surfaces. Finally, I repeat the same technique to create buttock lines in my new layer named Profile. Shown here, I create my array of surfaces running along the length and height of the ship and keep my intersecting lines. My next step is to collapse all of my lines onto a single plane so I can start to arrange my lines plan. I first create a surface in the same position which I originally did to create my section lines and use the project function to project all of my section lines onto the newly created surface. I then delete my original intersection lines and keep those which I projected onto the new surface. I repeat this step for the water lines and the buttock lines. The next action I do is rotate and move my lines until they're all displaying properly from a single view in Rhino. Here, you can see I rotated and translated my lines to be viewed from the XY viewport in Rhino, though it is okay if you choose a different view to work from. I then delete the surfaces as they won't be needed any longer. My next step is to delete parts of my lines which are not required in a lines plan. First, I work with my section lines as I draw an intersecting line from the keel to the top of my hull on the center line. This is done to perform the trim function as necessary. First. I count the amount of section lines in total, then delete half of them from right to left starting from the center, then from right to left starting from the far right side.
This effectively results in the aft section lines remaining on the left and the forward section lines remaining on the right. This is standard in a lines plan. Similarly, I delete the water lines that are on the starboard side of the ship and keep those from the port side. Water lines are symmetric, so this is okay to do. The buttock lines can remain as they are. Next, I tidy up the positions of the lines and move the section lines to the center of the page, ensuring there is sufficient room between the sets of lines. My next step is to create a grid for the lines plan. The grid density can be whatever you choose, within reason. It is important to make sure that for the buttock lines, the first horizontal grid line aligns with the keel of the hull, as this is the baseline of the ship. Also, the first vertical line should be aligned with the aft perpendicular of the ship. Similarly, the same alignment is taken with the water lines, as the first horizontal line is at the center line of the hull, and the first vertical line is at the aft perpendicular again. Likewise, the grid for the section lines should be aligned to start at the aft perpendicular for the first vertical line and at the baseline for the first horizontal line. Next, you'll see me trimming the grid lines to a consistent size with all three parts of the lines plan. This is important for a clean, professional look. From here, I add important drawing details, starting with the measurements. while noting significant points such as the baseline, aft perpendicular, center line, and midship symbol above the section lines. From here, I add other notable points, like the forward perpendicular and the design waterline. These details are important to be able to identify in the finished product and help give a greater understanding of the ship to those who view the lines plan. My last step is to create a title block to provide more information about the drawing. For the purpose of this example, I provide information regarding the author, the course, and project name, as well as some basic scantlings of the ship. The title block can be and include whatever you wish. Here you can see my finished product as I check and verify some key details I wanted to make sure were captured. This is a good time to step back from your designing mindset and try to view the drawing as a third party who is simply trying to get a handle on the ship. Any details that you wish were given in greater detail can be added at this stage. 
You may also notice that I chose to use dashed lines for the grid, which of course is optional and is up to you when you create your own lines plan.